Hi there! My name is Marzena and this is the third video of me transforming a doll into a doll figurine. Or maybe this time... Dolls? Yep, I'm gonna work on two dolls this time. One of them will be a Christmas present for my mom, who is a dentist, the best orthodontist, and my boss. And the second one I will give as a thank you to my second boss, which is the best dental technician. Yes, I'm covering two jobs now. And a day school. Not overworked at all. Yay! <laughs> anyway, what's the perfect theme for a doll for a dentist who loves fantasy creatures? Yes, a tooth fairy. And such double project will be a great way to celebrate my first 100 subscribers and first 1k views on my Witch Doctor video. And it will also be a big step into a new year. So let's dive in! I used a bunch of dolls this time. All three Wolf Sisters from Monster High. Claudia Wolf for her smiling head. Claudine Wolf for her regular sister body type. And Holine's grabby hand for one of my fairies. As you can see, their skin tones didn't match, but I wanted to change it drastically anyway, so it's okay. Also, Claudine's heads are a little smaller than her big sister's, so I decided to shrink them. Let's hope everything will work out and let the work begin! Of course I started with doll preparation. Cutting the hair is the first step here. I cut them as short as I could with my sharpest scissors. After this weird hot bath yoga, the heads were soft enough to remove them from the necks. The necks on both Claudia's were cracked, so I was sure this will be my first fix in the broken neck video. But surprisingly, nothing broke. I switched the heads and put aside dolls that I wasn't going to work on. While the heads were still warm, I removed the melted glue and hair plugs from the inside. It took quite some time. Of course, I repeated the process with the second head. I used pure acetone to remove the factory paint. I wiped the bodies with non-acetone nail polish remover. I sunk the heads in 100% acetone in a big pickle jar and let them marinate for two hours. After that, I gently took them out and let them dry for 24 hours for the acetone to completely evaporate. Straight from the jar, they were so jiggly and squishy and so big. That's the head shrinking for ya. 
I repeated the process twice to bring them to the satisfying size. There was a little dimple on one head, but the hair covered it later. I gave the body some gentle sanding, marked the body segments and started carving with my Dremel. I use my thumb to keep my hand very steady and my movements more precise, but it works poorly with a Dremel. This tool has this tip that's spinning along with the cutter, and whenever it touched my thumb, it hurt as hell. So I put Dremel aside and plugged in my dental micromotor, and it worked like a dream. I bought it a year ago, but never use it because I'm making dental stuff only at work and at school. But now I can use it for doll purposes and I'm really happy with that discovery. I left out the stomach because I wanted this doll to bend a little to her right, so I cut her torso in two pieces. Then I reattached them in a new position with a super glued wire and a hot glue. I covered the glue with epoxy sculpt and blended it using water and my fingertips. After it cured, I sanded it to make even smoother transition from epoxy to a plastic. Now I could finish the carving on her tummy. I repeated the carving process on the second doll, but this one will keep all of her parts intact. Here they are with their pretty segmented bodies. I snapped the tips of the neck pegs and widened the neck holes because I've seen other doll customizers doing so. And I definitely did something wrong because her head was all over the place. I thought that it might be the neck hole widening fault but without it, I wasn't able to put the head back on the body. So I decided that wobble head is better than no head at all. I was gonna glue them in place anyway. I cut off their ears and make tiny holes for new ears reinforcements.
I bent a thick wire in half, stuck it into the drilled holes and glued it on with super glue. I sculpted the ears with epoxy sculpt. As you can see, I tried to be wise and use gloves, but it just wasn't comfortable for me to work in them, so I took them off. You shouldn't do that if you can get an allergic reaction, but I'm fine, so I just couldn't bear the frustration. I let the epoxy dry for a few hours, then I gave it a little sanding. I used super glue to glue the heads in place. I drilled two tiny holes in both those foreheads where I will attach the antennas later. I fill the heads with hot glue just to close the ear holes and secure the neck and the new ears from the inside. Now they can get their soapy bath. After rinsing with clear water, I let them dry and gave them three coats of MSC. I did it outside, but it's all snowy and cold, so I hanged them to dry inside. My burrito yodas are ready for face-ups. I started by covering the nasty green with face-matching brown acrylic. I wanted my fairies to smile with teeth, and Claudia is the only Monster High doll that's doing so. But she's too dark, and I really wanted my fairies to be pale. Don't get me wrong, I love her dark skin. But from the beginning it didn't fit the concept, which started with the doll looking like my mom, with white skin and red hair. And even though I changed that idea, pale skin tone was still my goal. I really wanted to achieve that with only soft pastels, but no matter how many layers of color and MSC I put, they still looked, well, sickly. So, painful as it was, I realized that acrylics are my only option here. So I painted both heads with creamy light yellow and blushed them with soft pastels. Why such a weird color, you may ask? Well, making the doll to look like my mom was a pretty cool idea. But I had a really hard time figuring out the rest. I mean, what would she be wearing? A lab coat? Nah. If they were a real creature, would they wear clothes made from flower petals or leaves? Or maybe from something they could find in a dental clinic? I really wasn't fond of any of those ideas. And then it hit me. What if they were just like bugs? With segmented bodies and stuff, but bugs looking a little like teeth. So I'm thinking big crowny hairstyles and creamy skin color. That was a cool concept. Of course the skin color turned out too yellow, but I was just too lazy to repaint it all over again, so I just rolled with it. I marked the eye shapes with brown pencil. Then I remembered that I wanted this doll to be winking, so I removed one eye and replaced it with a closed one. The second doll got two opened eyes. I drew the eyebrows, but changed them to shorter ones.
Here's the moment I realized that my pencil sucks and I will have to make the entire face up with acrylics. As you can see, the doll's face is way too shiny. It's because of the weather outside that my Mr. Super Clear doesn't work good and my pencils doesn't stick to it. I still tried though, but it was only a pain and humiliation. If you know my previous videos, I hate using paint in face-ups, so I was really screaming internally. I guess it's a uh, Murphy's Law that if you want to make a gift and it needs to look perfect, stuff like this will happen. Anyway, I painted the eyes all black to make them look unhuman. I was using my thinnest brushes to add wrinkles and more details. And I tried to paint both dolls simultaneously, to speed up the process. They may be yellow as 18 year old smoker's tooth, but their teeth will be white. I added some color to their irises and, to be honest, I finally started to feel good about their faces. I added some highlights and details. painted the lashes. Added even more highlights and details. And I think that crazy highlights might be my thing, because I love what they are bringing to the face-up. To add some shine to the irises, I used Winston and Newton Golden Ink. Look how shiny and alive it looks! The light spots in the eyes and the face-ups are done. Of course, Satisfied Me wouldn't be really me, so I decided that this doll should look more down. So I lowered her pupils a little bit and that's when she started to look creepy. I tried to lower her lash lines to cover the creepiness and hated her more and more.
Finally, I admitted my failure and removed everything to get her to her previous state. Let's forget that this ever happened. I glued them in their poses and got this wonderful idea that if I will cover the joints with clay before attaching the doll to their stands, I will get easy access to their every parts. I'm having a really hard time trying to get a wooden stance in stores here in Poland. So I always make my own from a piece of wood bought in a hardware store. I drilled the holes in the stands and in the doll's feet. Do you remember my wonderful idea? Cover the joints first? Yeah, it was a dumb idea. During the process of attaching dolls to their stands, the clay cracked in many places. Well, a lesson for me. This time I attached the dolls not with a bamboo skewers, but with my thick bendable wire. And this idea was in fact a really great one. I had no problems with placing the dolls, even though I needed to attach them in some weird angles. I just bent the wire as I wanted. I know what you're thinking. Not this time, buddy. I drill the holes in their backs to attach the wings later. I painted the whole bodies with the same color that I used for the heads. This is a one coat of paint versus three coats of paint. I blushed the bodies to expose the body segments a little bit more. Why I wrapped them like a candy, you ask? Well, I didn't want any more layers of MSC on their faces and I still needed to seal the body several times. I put the brown paint into the curvings and added lots of white highlights to match the face up. I used soft pastels on brushed yarn to make an ombre effect on the wefts. Hmm, too red. Again, this time with more browns. I used hair iron to create silky wefts and also to seal the pigment on the wool fibers, I think. I created the wefts and cut them into pieces. I rolled one piece to create a small ponytail. I glued the ponytail to the top of her head. I wanted to avoid hot glue this time because of its thickness, but Elmer's glue wasn't on my side this time. So hot glue it is then. I glued the wefts from top to bottom this time. It created this weird hairline, but I was prepared for that. I was cutting small strands of wool hair and gluing them straight to the head.
It looks a little bit messy now, but it will be pretty decent after the glue dries. I repeated everything on the second doll and gave them both a crowny haircut. I used gallons of hairspray and the hairstyles were ready. To the wings then! It will be my first time working with Angelina film, so fingers crossed. I folded the wire and shaped it as I wanted. For each doll I created two bigger and two smaller pieces. Then I made a sandwich from wire and Angelina film, covered it in a pattern paper and ironed it gently. Oof, it worked! I cut off the excess and burned the edges with Kager torch. I tried to add patterns with ball pen, but it didn't work so I made them with permanent marker. Pretty! From three pieces of warbler I created Elytras, the hard otter wings that beetles have, for example. Oops, forgot about the wire attachment. I cut it and shaped it and added patterns with my soldiering iron. Painted all four of them with brown and creamy acrylics and blushed them with soft pastels. Added some highlights with paint marker and covered everything with gloss varnish. Using my orthodontic forceps I shaped the antennas, painted them and glued them to doll's foreheads. As you can see, I attached the wings off camera, because it was a pain in the butt. The holes in the back were too small, my super glue didn't want to work and I ended up just using a black hot glue instead. With my cardboard borders, I was ready for my favorite doll stand making technique. You know it. I took a small container filled with clean kit litter and mixed it with wood glue. Then I spread a thin layer on the stands. I like to poke it here and there while it's curing to create those holes and bumps. I sanded the edges. painted everything with acrylics. It was Christmas Eve already, so I was in a bit of a hurry, cause in just a few hours I was supposed to give the finished doll to my mom, and there was still plenty of doll unrelated stuff to do. Time for the teeth that I created the night before. I glued them one by one to the stands and added some moss, because I love adding some moss to my stands.
I gave my super glue one last chance to cooperate and found him a new forever home. Stay there. So I glued the brush to my technician fairy's hand with a hot glue. Covered what the super glue super did with a gloss varnish. And the third project is done. Here they are. I learned so many new stuff during this project. Made my first hybrid, shrunk the heads, cut my doll into pieces, made my first wings, etc. I also stepped out from my comfort zone and created the face up entirely with acrylics and pastels. And even liked it. I wish I wasn't so lazy and repaint them with less yellow color, but overall I think they are cute. And even though it was hard to say goodbye to them, I hope that my mom and my boss really liked them. And what do you think? You can write your opinions in the comment section, and if you liked this process, leave a like and subscribe for more content. I want to say a big thank you to all of my subscribers for sharing your thoughts with me and for giving me so much support. You're amazing! Thank you all for watching and see you soon! Never ending story. Na, 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 na.